all screwed up out there, man. But you don't need me to tell you that. You already know. Welcome to Deep Americana. Hi, I'm Ray Carney. Today I'll be interviewing Anonymous about his experiences from Nepal to America and what drove those. Please join us. I go by the first four uh, letters of my name um, because uh, Americans can't say my name. So, where do you come from? Kathmandu. Okay. How was, how, what, what was it like uh, as opposed to, to being here? Number one, being the horn dog I am, girls never wore summer dresses there, so there was no cleavage there. The biggest cultural difference, because I guess what I'm trying to lead to is there was no such thing as uh, sex back in Nepal and Hinduism there's no such thing as sex. You only have sex to make a baby. That's it. So uh, that's completely different than here. It's like absolutely. recreational here, right? So um, that's that's one. Two poverty obviously, right? And three entitlement. In this country, if you don't have a car but if you don't have cable, you're poor. Back home, poverty is uh, when you walk three kilometers uh, with a jug uh, and go to a well, get water, come back to your hut that's made out of clay and uh, cow manure as pillars. And, now, uh, is that water that's used for drinking? Oh yeah, it, it, you have to boil it, and then yeah, that's that's yeah, that's that's, uh, that's water for drinking for sure. A huge difference. Yeah, but that's poverty back home here. Poverty is. Uh, you know, if you have bad credit. Or do you think like poverty here is like being rich over there? Uh, poverty here is, is a lavish lifestyle there. Right. As in like, I mean, $1, $1 is 121 rupees. How much of the hell, how long would that last? Well, just to put it into perspective, I guess uh, we're here in Colorado, right? Colorado has a population of five and a half million people. Uh, Nepal, mass-wise, is 75% the size of Colorado. And uh, Nepal has a population of 29 million people. Um, out of the 29 million people, uh, 22 million people live off about $800 a year. Um, and the other 7 million, there's no such thing as middle class. There's either poverty or there's rich people, which are scumbags, just like here, just like anywhere. Um, but back home, there's family. Having a, a uh, Camaro in America is equivalent to having a uh, motorcycle where you transport your family in one motorcycle, just like Slumdog Millionaire. Mm -hmm. That's reality. So, yeah, it, obviously a different side of the world, mm -hmm. right? I, I can say here, and obviously I'm going to sound biased because I can't compare poverty there to here, right. different kind of poverty, right, for each right. different spectrum, right? But nonetheless, poverty. Right. Um, so, for example, social security number. There's no such thing as a social security number in Nepal. Oh, wow. Finance. You finance a house in America, right? You finance a car in America. You can finance fucking pretty much everything. Right, right. In America. Well, in Nepal, if you can't, if you don't have the money to build a house, you live in a hut. So you can't just go get a loan or anything? No, there's no such thing as loans. Wow. There's no such thing as a social security number. It's mono -y -mono. So is it unless you're born into having these things in, in Nepal? Then it's a slippery slope. Yeah. I love that question. It's a slippery slope. Um, because, so, I'm, I'm going to leave names out of this equation. Yes. Uh, my uncle was considered in 2000, between 2002 to 2015, 
he was considered top 10 neurosurgeon on the planet. And he came from a village in Nepal. Poverty, pure poverty. Okay. And um, came to Kathmandu. They just go, because uh, uh, in Nepal there's a thing called SLC. Right? SLC means a school leaving certificate. You take that in 10th grade. And if you fail it, you can never go to college ever. So anyways, uh, after SLC in his village, came to Kathmandu, uh, studied in Kathmandu for, 18, uh, for two more years, and then he went to Oxford. And he is considered one of the, the best neurosurgeons, not only in Nepal or Asia, in the world. Top 10. He was, he was actually one of the neurosurgeons that was a part of uh, operating the two uh, Japanese uh, Siamese twins back in uh, 2000, maybe 2006 to 2008. I don't, know, I don't know the exact years. But so I, the reason I'm bringing that up is he was an academic guy that came from nothing. Right, right. Me, on the other hand, lavish lifestyle, academic fuck up. Because now when I look back, I was this spoiled American kid. Right. In Nepal, in Nepali terms, I was a spoiled American kid. So I come to America and these kids are talking back to teachers in a classroom. Right. I'm like, what would happen if you did that in Nepal? You get your ass whooped by the right. teacher. Every teacher has their own fucking stick, dude. <laughs> so you don't do your homework. You get the teacher ask you to have your hands like this, and they rock you with their stick. What are you going to do? Go home and tell your parents that you got beat by your teacher because you didn't do your homework? Now you get rocked by your parents. It's an it's a academically focused uh, culture. That's all they know is either you're a fucking doctor or you're an engineer. Besides that, you're fucking worthless. There's no entrepreneurship. Different, again, different, different spectrum, right? So I guess more or less, I know I'm going on different tangents here, so many tangents, and I appreciate you for letting me do this. But my uncle, one of the best neurosurgeons to ever live on this planet, died of cancer. Why? Well, it doesn't matter if you're a fucking American or it doesn't matter if you're a fucking Nepali. It doesn't matter if you're Bangladeshi. It doesn't matter if you're Ethiopian. It doesn't matter if you're Somalian. Mm -hmm. Right? All it takes is, hey man, just let people do what they want to do. And I'm living this. Right now, this is the most open I've gotten to be in a while. I can't say this in front of my mom. She would fucking disown me. Why though? Well, because she's rooted in a different type of culture. You're, you're like, you've had that culture, but then you came over to America and had another culture as well. Yeah. Sure. You gotta think in, in pers uh, terms of people's experiences sometimes, which is really hard to do, especially with like parents and things of that nature, as to how, how and why they are, you know, I was raised some of the time by a millionaire uncle mm -hmm. who had a sixth grade education, super racist, sexist. Okay. When I was six, I met Clint Eastwood, right? Mm -hmm. You know, just cra crazy type of stuff. But, you know, I really despised uh, his isms he was hung up in, right? Okay. But I loved him as a person with his drives and things like, things like that. So you immigrated to America. When I was 15, yes, sir. Um, Tell me a little bit about that, if you don't mind. No, not at all. So, uh, um, back home, uh, dad was, uh, dad did well for himself. So, uh, the first time I visited America was 96. <coughs> um, I was 10 years old. Uh, but before 96, uh, when I was uh, eight, uh, dad, dad took mom and myself and this is uh, before 
my little sister, my little sister was born uh, 97. Uh, sorry, 98. 98, yep. Yeah, no, 97. So the first time I came to America was 94, actually, the year that, I didn't, now I look back, that was the year that Dallas Cowboys played the Pittsburgh Steelers in their Super Bowl. Uh, and I did not know what American football is, which is why I will never call it football. Football to me is football. There's only two countries on this planet that call it soccer, America and Canada. <laughs> right. They're all with the, uh, it will always be football to me. There's 100, 196 countries on this planet, two call it soccer. Right, our football, the name is stolen. It's from American soccer. football. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, so yeah, yeah. Um, that took me, um, so yeah, actually brought me to America in 94. Uh, we went to Thailand uh, 95. Uh, back to, uh, we did, the first time we came to America, and there's a reason I'm explaining all this because, uh, yeah, I, I still, I know your question, like, how is, what's the difference, right? Yeah, that's okay. And uh, no, so, so what, what, what I'm trying to say is, uh, Dad was uh, a GM for Northwest Airlines. We flew from fucking Kathmandu to Bangkok, entire airways, and from Tha- from Thailand to America to JFK to San Francisco to Singapore. Flew first class for free. When I went back. Home and went to school and told my friends when I was eight years old, I was like, hey guys, I just went to America, or uh, actually America, Osaka, um, now New York, San Francisco, and Singapore. They looked at me like, they looked at me as like I was a spoiled brat, which I was, because they're so poor. They don't have that. If they just get out of Kathmandu, it's a vacation for them. Right. If they just get to go a hundred kilometers out of the district that right. they live in, it's 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 a celebration. Right. But again, my happy ass was raised by a wealthy family. Right. Poverty, to answer your question, it really hit me when what I was telling you guys earlier about I'm like, hey mom. Why did we leave that lavish lifestyle when we came to America, when we moved to America in 2001, when she decided to pack up the shit and bring two kids, one 15, one is four, and leave all this shit and come to America and say, hey man, I'm done getting my ass whooped. She saw a way out of an abusive situation. And it, it's sad because the, her only cho- her only choice was to fucking leave the country. So there's that nothing she, else she could have done. No, and, uh, even after she did, uh, even after she did that shit, like she got boycotted by all my dad's family, right? Because of the Hindu fucking culture, right? Yeah, the male driven, yeah, misogynist. Yeah, like the, this this book has said you can't do that. Right, right, right. Which is in in like scope is so ridiculous. But as a human being, I'm like. Fuck! I wouldn't do that. You're way more badass than I am, Mom. I mean, if men had to get pregnant, I would not be pregnant. <laughs> yeah, I won't be most pregnant. This, this woman just picked up two kids, came to this country on a tourist visa, lived here illegally, worked in Boulder for $5.50 an hour at a fucking laundromat while I was going to high school, and... Married my dad now, who is, it was supposed to be a transaction for a green card back in 2006. $10,000, you give me a green card, we're done. And then this angel of a guy, my pops, I'm going to leave his name out of the equation, but now that's, now this, this is my pops. So poverty is just how you look at it. To me, at least. Yeah, I think it is. It's a perspective, right? Like, but it's also a stigma. Or poor, if you took a poor person from America and dropped them uh, from where you were from, right? They they wouldn't know what to do. Well, they would live. I'll tell you what. This is what. This is what would would happen. Is um, hypothetical speaking, say if they're still getting the social security or the fucking food stamps or whatever dollar wise, right? Right. Say if they're 
monthly income is at the minimum, let's just even say $600. Okay, so let's take $600 times it by 121. So we're talking over 75,000 rupees. They're fucking living big. So a person that makes six hundred dollars in America goes to Nepal. Balling, like these kids nowadays would say. It's amazing. Is it though? It's it's interesting, you know. I, I've been to other countries. I've not lived in another country and had to rely on any monetary anything, right? And so I don't have much of a comparison other than. Talking with other people, different things, right? And so, for someone, it, it, it just it's it's something that we don't realize. I think Americans Absolutely. are spoiled brats, a lot of times. You're not. Well, sometimes, but we've got to. He's not. Know, we, we we have to. We grow. Some of us grow. You know. No, it's because of the it's because of complacency. Yeah. It's because of a lot. Just it's crazy. We got to get smarter. Like. Uh, is is because of the, to me like, from my outside looking in, it's because of the complacency. The reason I say that is because, uh, like I said, you guys are not average Americans. There's a world outside to you guys, outside of America, which it, there really, really fucking is. I wish I wish a lot of Americans actually looked into it. Like there's really a big ass world outside New York City and San Francisco. There really is. I mean, besides the Pacific Ocean and the Atlantic. I mean, there's a really fucking nice world out there, but people choose not to. You know, most, I feel like most Americans might go to the next state over. You know, a lot of it is just, everything's so expensive. So it's, it's hard it's to not, get out though, of it's not about It's not about the dollar amount. Right. Yeah. It, it's, uh, it, it just, it's a lot of people don't get that culture. And we it's because why? Culture. Why do you think so? That's around us is around everything else. Because uh, we're so ingrained. We live in a yes, yeah, uh, a yes uh, person type culture. We're so indebted to a job that probably doesn't pay us quite enough where it might. Um, but at that job, if your boss comes down, you always have to say yes or they just get rid of you. Period. And so that has transpired the system. into our culture. It's and a system. So, yeah, it's, it's there, there's an, a thing like when corporations came about, right? They noticed, all right, we're going to take care of the families. That takes care of the workers. And it was actually a good deal, right? Sure. We're covered. People used to get out of high school, get a job in a factory, be able to raise kids and have a wife be at home with the kids and pay for everything. Nice sure. house, things of that nature. And then as time progressed, you know, corporations realized, oh, shit, you know, uh, we need more money, right? And I so agree. they started cutting these things back. Right, we started shipping things other places to make it cheaper, and now we've transpired our, our, our uh, culture, our family, uh, th things of this nature, our units, into a corporate ideal of like three strikes and you're out within even the family. In, in a in a way, sure. like you offended me, fuck you. I'm not gonna talk. To you. Does that make sense? So what does that equal to? What do you mean? Everything you just said uh, equals what? to what? What is that equal to? Yeah, um, everything you just said. It, okay. It's kind of the journey of the mentality of well, to American me, culture. So in my opinion, mm -hmm. everything you just said mm -hmm. equals to a fucking system. And this country has figured it out. And not saying... Well, you realize what's going on like in America. For sure. This is one of the biggest melting pots in, in, Absolutely. in human history. Absolutely. And so people aren't used to it. But that. is it though? As far as that we know, I'm pretty sure. Why would you not say Britain is a melting pot? Uh, well, why is America a bigger melting pot than America, Britain? Well, yeah, America was kind of built with immigrants. immigrants. So was Britain? I don't know. It would be a debate as to which one's bigger then at that point. Obviously America. Because Britain is maybe the size of 75% of the size right. of Texas. Right. Even at that, that place too, it's a new thing there as well, if that makes sense. With that big of a melting pot of culture. And I think people, you know, are just, we're not used to that. We're coming around to 
But, but there's no, you shouldn't have to be. That's what I'm trying to get to. And that's no, exactly you, you should. You and, that, should. and that's exactly what I was trying to get to is used to. Right. That was that. That was what that was what I was trying to dig out of you, is used. To. Why should you have to be used to anything? Why can't you just experience everything? We well, got a thing. Let's do this. Let's look at it this way. In America, the Constitution is written by slave owners, <laughs> right? America wasn't made mm. in a nice way. It was forged in, in just the crazy ideologies, right? And so I think we're still shaking that off as well and getting rid of that type of mentality. And it's, uh, it's, it's just trying to, it's trying to get people to understand each other. And, you know, if, if for, for instance, think about, uh, think about what it takes to be racist, to, to be afraid of something you don't understand. So you decide, Insecure. Check it out. You assign a negative term to that because you don't want to learn. Um, it, it just it's uh, we got to got to be open to uh, open to learning. We got to understand. We have to help each other. We got to understand that this is like a giant. The earth is like a giant animal. And but racism, we, listen, we are its cells. Yeah, we need to be able to work together. But racism exists everywhere. You know why, Ray? Ignorance. So, well, so I'm a, I'm, I'm a Brahmin. Mm -hmm. So in, in Hinduism, Brahmins are not supposed, there's for caste. Mm -hmm. Okay? So Brahmin being the highest caste, I'm not supposed to, I'm not allowed or supposed to be married to this lowest caste. Right. That's racist. Right. It's classism. But... Same kind, like, it is. same it concept, is. right? It is. So everywhere it exists. Right. So I'm, I'm not just, I'm not just talking about America right now. I'm just talking about the world. And where does that come from? These old ideologies, right? Well, we don't know. Well, it comes from these old beliefs, belief systems. A lot of things. Well, I think. Right. I think I put my hand on this fucking thing called religion, right? And which I, uh, you know, what if, if religion, what if. A god could have a beer with me, then I would be religious. Because ain't no, there's been never, there's never been a fucking god that stood up and like, hey, Sush, let's have a fucking beer together. If that ever happens, I will be fucking religious immediately. You know, my favorite god is Superman, and he makes me smile. <laughs> That's mine. Mine is, mine is Wolverine. There you go. And he, uh, I mean, if I was a gay, I would fuck him. Okay. That being said, let's get back to the world, right? Like, so there's 196 countries in this world, right? Geography. Were, were, were you guys taught geography growing up? Mm -hmm. Were you guys? Or did you have interest in geography and you went and figured it out yourself? Or when, did you go to school? Was geography a class? Yeah, it was a subject. Second grade. I have no idea when to follow school. No, let's let's say like elementary school was geography a a class. Um, it's possible. I guarantee you, it was not because you guys went and figured out geography because you guys said, "Hey man, I am American. I just happen to be born in this country." I mean, us in Nepal, in second grade, we every week we were given a different continent, and. We had to learn the capitals of the countries in each continent. The only one I was 100% on was Antarctica. The capital of Antarctica is Antarctica. That's right. That's the only one I nailed. Besides that, my ass got whooped every fucking week. Because <laughs> yeah. I failed. Right. And today, like right now, as we say here, as we talk, there's 194 countries in the world. I can probably name you a hundred capitals out of the hundred ninety-four countries. This at, at this point, R Russia was part of Asia. On that note, give me a random country. The Ukraine. I do not know the capital of Ukraine. Give me another one. Africa. That's not a country. 
So, so why, why do we live in this country, right? And I have so much hatred. I have so much hatred. And these people have hatred towards me. And we've never even fucking met each other. And we don't even know what each other look like. But it's just a stigma. Right. It's it's horrible, is what that is. So why is that? It's because people are, are afraid. Insecure? They're, they're insecure. There's other things that prey upon that. There are fear-mongering type, type things. And it, it's... Why can't it be like you guys, though? It's control. Well, not everybody has the same experience, and it's a big portion of it. I think is this people, is choice, though, right? People, it is, but you got to understand that choice first. I've noticed people that had tragedy came back from it, and things of that nature tend to get there a little quicker. But it, it, what it is is we understand this, so we need to reflect that to other people. Um, Can we? Know? And and teach teach them. I've been told that uh, that's impossible, especially. Uh, the mentality of the last few years to where our, our ideas and things get further and further apart and we get more and more angry at each other. Um, it's, it's, uh, it, it's fear. It, it really is. It's not only fear, but it's the other idea of I'm right. And it's also, you know, we, we don't know what an argument's for anymore. We don't understand how to learn from each other, how to help each other. And a bigger portion is to facilitate communities as well. We don't understand that, especially in America. We're worried about I, me, and mine. Whereas it needs to be we. Us. Yeah. Yeah. It really and does. Ours. Things would, would last much longer. Generations would, would go, I, I mean, our, it would just be a better society. And it's 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 what we need. We, we really need to. I, I don't know how to get there, but yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. This right here is going to get, in, to me, is going to get me there. I'm there because this, to me, right here, I'm honored. Like, I, it just means the world to me. Well, because that's something about everyone. Everybody has, has a, a narrative. Everybody has a story. And everybody has a fascinating story. And that's something I think we tend to ignore is that, and not just people looking at us, but ourselves, is we don't realize that it's this amazing thing that can, that, that, that's there, our very experience. The bad things that happened, you, you know what, that, that's something that's probably building you up because you were probably having to hit your head. So you realize there was a ceiling there and you had to duck and go through so you get out that door. I did, but I still, now, now, it still, it still goes on. Yeah. Like, like, man, why? Let's go learn. We learn. Everybody should learn every day. Should learn something. Well, you day. do. Yeah. Okay. Because a lot of Americans do, but not an average American does. But I, that's right. And I would say in, in all cultures, people learn every day. It, it, and it's, it's. It, they don't, though. And that, well, just to, you got to think, it's perception. Do you have anything to add? So, so high school, right? Mm-hmm. Here in America, everybody has, they can go to school, right? Every kid from kindergarten, like possible. The, the school system here, everyone can go get an education, right? Just uh, to, yeah, they can. Because of public schools. There's, school there's l- levels to it, yeah. Public schools, right? Okay. In Nepal, there's no such thing. Right. This is one country in the world. Mm-hmm. And it happens to be, what, maybe the 15th poorest country in the world. My little cousin, man, when he came from here, from Nepal to here, again, I'm going to leave name, names out. He had to pay international student fees. You know how he paid those fees? 
by working at a liquor store underneath the table. Because, he, and so he's supposed to pay, he, he, no, he's not supposed, he has to pay international student fees, not, 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 not state, not, not resident fees, international student fees, okay? And the fucking colleges only allow international students to work 20 hours. So you know what they have to do? They have to go work underneath the table. They have to go work illegally. They have to go work at a fucking Indian restaurant, Nepali restaurant, Chinese restaurant, liquor store, a gas station, just to put themselves through college. Because legally, they cannot work more than 20 hours a week, a week at their campus. And they're, so 20 hours a week, let's just take minimum wage, let's just take fucking San Francisco, California, Seattle, so yeah, $15 an hour. 15 times 20, 300 bucks. So they make 300 bucks a week, but their tuition is, so now they have to, with the 300 dollars, they have to pay their tuition, their housing, their meals, their life. How do these kids do it? Because they have this, they have this fucking heart where it's mano y mano. And there's, millions in this country from all over the world, these international students that come to this country that have this pinnacle. Uh, they, have, they can only work 20 hours legally and they work in restaurants, at liquor stores, at gas stations. You know why? Because they have to pay for their fucking tuition. That is triple the time of uh, their classmate who's an American and who can go work 40 hours a week and have health insurance and have not a visa, they're citizens. Okay. So, so, so this, this greatest country, which America, I, I believe America is the greatest bully on this planet. I say that because uh, once a great man told me, he's like, hey man, listen, you don't fuck with the states. They'll find you and they'll kill you. Well, Osama being the example. Took him nine years, but got him, right? You don't fuck with America. And so like growing up, in Nepal, people call it Amrika because they can't, they don't know, they're, they're illiterate. They can't say America. They call it Amrika. Mm -hmm. so it's, it's, it's mind boggling to me that it hurts me so much. And this is for, I hope this, this interview goes viral because, or this conversation, I'm so sorry, <coughs> it's supposed to be an interview. And then I think, I think my happy ass has been talking the whole time. So, uh, but dude, there's kids that come from a different country and 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 just want to have a better life. And they come here and they have a more miserable life. Dude, I'll say this right there. now. Uh, May 21st, 2020, mm -hmm. I will even write this down, if I ever get deported, which I wouldn't surprise if I do, when I get back to Nepal, I will open a bar and it's going to be um, freeze, that's going to be the name of the bar. Cool. That's it. I'll just be brutally honest and transparent. This is not what I just thought of right now. So, I've been thinking so about you, this for a while, for like, sure. So, that's your favorite band? Or, I mean, what, what's up with the Humphrey stuff? Well, so growing up in Nepal, um, British, British rock and roll was what we, were, what we know. Mm -hmm. 
So when I had a Walkman, when I was, when I had my first Walkman, I was 10 years old, so we're talking 96. By that time in America, you guys had the CD players, you guys had Discman. Right, right, right. Back home, if you had a Walkman, you were like, oh, you are rich. Yeah, right. So, so yeah, mom and pops bought me a Walkman. And, uh, you know, like I said, uh, British music. Floyd and Maiden Stones. The only American band at that point I used to listen to was Clinton Rhodes. Oh, yes. so, so I come to America and I listen to rap. I'm like, why does it sound like people are reading newspaper? <laughs> right. Just just very fast. Not knowing rap. Now I'm 34. I know so much rap. I know so much beautiful rap. I don't consider today's... There's no such thing as rap now. There's, it's just... It's asinine, but that, that no, yeah, some music like so. Umphreys, like, and so Umphreys happened to me. Um, uh, I popped my cherry uh, New Year's Eve uh, 2016 at the Aragon. Um, George Michael had just died uh, the day before, and um, my first show was uh, when they covered Freedom, and uh, so that was 2016. From then till now. I've been on a pretty fucking good mission, probably about maybe 40, 40 shows, I'm about four years, I'm about 40 shows, because these guys just made me happy, they just took my soul away and I could just be me, man. When I watched them, I just, like nothing else mattered, I'm just so happy, I'm, yeah, just, yeah. I'm just so privileged and so honored to being in front of the six fucking dudes on stage. Yeah, you know, you know what I notice about Humphrey's shows as well is it seems like, and I've been to, uh, you know, tons of death metal, heavy metal, you know, Oz, but I've seen Black Sabbath, just tons of stuff. When I go to an Humphrey show, it seems like people are a little more uh, respectful uh, in, in a way. Some people are still douchebags, but, oh, but people give, give, give you space. Now you go to like a Slipknot show, right? Yeah. And it's way... Like it, oh, and, know. you know, you, you need a switchblade to, to like be okay. There. Yeah. Not really, but it's, no, just, I know it's, what you mean. it's yeah. a, it's a thing of that nature. And, and I feel like, yeah. The, no, but to answer your question, like positive media, but to answer your question, like what did Aubrey do to me? Right. Did they, they gave me a reason to be happy because their, their lyrics are so deep. It's, you're not supposed to be happy. I mean, you know, I, I, for the first uh, year after popping my cherry, 2017, all, all I cared about was the chords and the beat. And in 2018, I started listening to the lyrics. Mm -hmm. And so, like, to me, they're, they're, they're just different. They're like Floyd, but different. Mm -hmm. Right? And then, again, Compared to you guys, I'm a, I'm a noob in the jam jam band scene, complete fucking noob, especially compared to them. I was gonna say the only other jam band that I like super liked was called Antibacterial Cereal, and nobody <laughs> will ever be able to find that. So now that you bring up cereal, I had never had cereal until I came to America. Mm -hmm. They don't know what cereal is. So back home, growing up again, being from a wealthy family. From the cow's tit mm -hmm. to my mouth was 30 minutes for the milk. So we used to have milk. My, 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 dad, well, my mom made this happen. My dad just had to pay for it. But from the cow's tit to my mouth was 30 minutes mm -hmm. for the milk. That's, uh, so there was no, there was no such thing as here. Back home, I, I, my breakfast back home was bread, mm -hmm. milk. Milk, eat. Lunch was in school. So it was rice, dal, chicken curry, cauliflowers. Which is actually pretty healthy, isn't it? Dude, I have the most ridiculous uh, system that you'll ever, you can literally give me anything and I'll, I will never get sick. I will eat it and I will never get sick. So I, I, so like, like for for that matter, 
you know, in America, like, you don't feed dog bones because the bones can get stuck in their intestines and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Back home, my sister, she's my older sister, she, I will never forget that day, burying her, I was, I was 10 years old. Anyways, her meal every day was all of our leftovers, which had a bunch of bones and rice and dal. Uh, that was our bowl. For the dog or something? For the dog. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm saying, she's my oldest. Like, okay. ah, she was yeah. in my, she was my, yeah, she was my oldest sister. Dude. I'll never forget that, the day I buried that girl. But in America, you give a dog bones, they might die. Well, because maybe you guys, maybe in this fucking country, it's a business. Food is a business. Back home, it's just, that's just how you survive, is by eating. Right. Well, not, not with chemicals. You don't need chemicals back home. You just need water, you need right. soil, and you just need plants, and I, I you grow you, you, food. You know, what, you know what it is, is America is a business. Yeah, but we've, yeah, lost, absolutely. we've lost, we, we don't understand that, you know, that, that's the basic concept, is that people need to be able to eat. You know, half the stuff that people grow away right now, you can feed probably 40 other countries. Absolutely. Right. And we just, we don't quite, it, well, it's again, not in the paradigm. You know what it comes down to? The fucking system. Comes down to, yeah. No, it comes down to the fucking system, which is wild. 20th and Sheridan. The target on 20th and Sheridan. Mm -hmm. Okay. I said manage that team on the store. In front of that target. We'll never forget, last year, the whole block's light went out. King Super's lights went out for 30 minutes. King Super dumped out $50,000 worth of food. For 30 fucking minutes, the lights went out. They dumped out $50,000 oh, $50, worth of food. Which is nuts. It's insane. However, right. the system says, right. they, they right. got to give it to right. a homeless right. person, but the system right. says, if that homeless person got sick, from that food that they're right, giving right, them, right. that homeless person gets to sue the fucking so, company. So, so it's a fucking it's, system. It's, well, it's, and it, it, it's perpetuating, <laughs> making more money. And basically, the, the real reason, I think we all know, that the system wants you to throw this food away and not give it to the homeless is because we want people to have to pay for everything. Right. We, yeah, the absolutely. system and the businesses don't want people to be able to help each other um it, it, it's kind of like with it just was so it, it's nuts um it, it's kind of like with, when you look at illegal downloading pirating movies or music right um to me that's uh hunting and gathering it's file sharing right and we didn't like that because because we he, 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 people are sharing these files and it's proven that the uh Industries for movies and music weren't hurt as much as it was advertised before. People were still buying their products and things and their movies and things of that nature. Now, mm -hmm. we'll say a few downloaded stuff and then sell it on the street. But how much, how much good. better did Napster make? Napster. They made money from it, I think, right? You no, know I'm saying, you know, you, you know what I'm talking about, right? Napster? The first. Uh, I mean, Napster, LimeWire. Right. Remember one of those days? Right. Yeah. And then YouTube comes out and we're like, hey, man, we can do this legally. Right, right. It, it's uh, like, right. It, you, you can, right? Right. It's, that's what it, it, it is. It, the, the control, like if you think about illegal downloading, think about this. So you want to advertise, you buy, you put your stuff on a billboard, right? The cars drive by. And there's probably a certain percentage, uh, we know this much traffic goes through here, right? But there's no way to ever tell how many people look at that billboard and go see that movie or call that ad, right? And so on a torrent that someone downloaded for free, uh, you could put previews within that. You can count how many people downloaded that. Make it to where that file can't be fast forwarded. So people would pretty much almost always have to see that advertisement. Then you can count how many people had seen that in, 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 in rudimentary terms. 
but we were afraid like it, it's a so hunting and gathering society is just pretty pretty good They're really helpful to each other right we we're afraid of that you know we we, we think that we our, our companies and things of that nature are, are so they, they just want to keep growing right it's capitalist great idea where we just keep growing keep growing keep growing right and, and keep going after these resources right and then what happens other people want the resources well we go to war with them sell them guns or someone else they go to war then we'd help take over whatever and so it's this we keep taking over things it's like hold on you know my, my grandma always said you're going to catch more flies with honey than vinegar right and so what i'm saying there is that it is far better to be good to each other absolutely and and share and share not take not try to dictate share and that's something that that we're our our our, our human nature is maybe possibly greedy absolutely or, or something like that that we need to get around oh, no, and we need to understand I mean, that we're, we're assholes but let's go back to nepal now perfect that you say that i'm so appreciative appreciative that you say that so back home right these yeah. these these mobs, these gangsters, they go kidnap kids, okay? Mm-hmm. Poke out their eyes, poke their eyes out, mm-hmm. cut their limbs, okay? Why? Put them on the street to beg, and they have, and so you ever watched *Slum Dog Millionaire*? You ever watched that movie? So what have we seen that movie? It still happens till today, as we speak. They go kidnap these kids from these villages, okay? Poke again, poke their eyes out, okay? Cut their limbs, cut their arms, cut their legs, put them on a wood, have a tray in front of them to bed. And they have multiple of them. Mm-hmm. Okay? And at the end of the night, they come pick up the tray, they come, at that point, the kid is an object to, to them. Mm hmm. Which is terrible. So, so, in all reality, Nepal is worse than America. Because that's not being allowed, but that's still happening. That's just not happening in America. In America, you're so, either getting killed or you're going so through. So, I think I was, I would say, when I was around six, then we'll wrap up after this. When I was around uh, six years old, I lived in uh, San Jose, California, right? And I was going to school there. Um, and I wasn't with my parents and my mom on my sixth birthday. I won't get much into a, a higher one. Um, I was put on an airplane without being told that that was going to happen by myself at six year old, six years old on my birthday. After I was promised uh, toys, that didn't happen. So, anyways, I get flown by myself to California. Six year old has no idea what's going on, so on and so forth. Anyways. Um, uh, so I ended up, uh, going to school, um, at Highland High, I believe in San Jose. And I made friends there, you know, you know, you're going to do that or, or what have you. And I made this one friend I really liked, uh, and he'd come over and he let, never let on, but he was really, really, apparently really poor. Right. Um, and he, his eyes weren't poked out or, or anything of that nature. His mom was a junkie and she would make him go out and panhandle, which is probably, it, is, it, it wasn't like, you know, mal, you know, beat up or anything to go do that, right? But the reality is the uh, mental abuse that kid went through. Uh, with, with that, I, I will say, is probably on the same level as kids getting their legs cut off and eyes poked out. And it's terrible on any, in, in, any, any country you're from. Well, you, you, you know, you know, you know what yeah. you do with a, a little kid. You know, something that we all have for sure. I listen, would hug. Listen, I would hug and smudge. Listen, this is the thing about children. They can, we bring kids into this world, right? And we oftentimes forget about how hard this life is after you get to a certain age. We, we forget about that it, it is so money driven mm-hmm. and you don't want to, a kid needs their innocence. 
that's why I feel like we have tons of education problems here. <laughs> is because kids Absolutely don't have, have the right. foundations uh, to grow in a, in a lot of places. And there's there's a lot of bad shit. Long story short, you know, I found out that he panhandled because one night I was asleep, and uh, I guess he got arrested for panhandling. Mind you, we're six. And so he came uh, to our house, and I was asleep anyways, uh, saying that he lived there. It was some pretty uh, scary, terrible Six years old. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. All right. Look, look at this finger real quick. Uh-huh. So this is the same finger as this, right? Look at this finger real quick. Oh, Jesus, yeah. 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 Looks mangled. So the reason I show you this is... Uh, Here's how American Dad, uh, say if you gave me a soccer ball, okay? So say if, um, let's see, give my phone real quick. Say if this was a soccer ball, American Dad would be like, oh, bud, go get it. You know what my dad did? This is how that happened. Fucking ripped it. It happened when I was nine years old. Yeah. And this is how I was taught not to he said hey man you you want to play this game right yes dad i've been playing this since i was years old i'm not gonna take it easy on you you're not gonna get an honorable mention trophy bud mm-hmm. not gonna get one of those we either play or we don't play 50 50 and i live my life till today 50 50. Okay. Anything I do in life, any thing I ever do in life, people, I either have acquaintances or family. Mm-hmm. Like I was telling you guys earlier. Mm-hmm. So, just to go based off what you're saying, fortunately, I had a dad that was a badass and that had my back. You're a friend. I feel so bad for that, for that dude. Mm-hmm. He's probably a good ass man now, and I hope he's. I, I hope he's well, well too. I, I have no idea, you know. But it's. Again, different spectrum, right? Here, here, these kids are getting their asses whooped by this dude that their mom is fucking. Mm-hmm. Doesn't make it. Mm-mm. Either one of them is not right. No, no. no. Oh, dude, uh, uh, like, so I, I think we identified something here. It's like there, there's like isms, sexism, racism, classism in all of our cultures around the globe. Uh, and, and it's like... Movies are shitty. I, I think in, inherently, and, and I think that we... It, we just, it's, we're, we're shitty but we also have things around us that, that a lot of us don't quite understand. That or we, appreciate. That, that we, you know, we, we let just import, that we let can control things and influence things, and it's not necessarily the, the fault there, but we, I, I feel like we, we need to get back to, to learning, um, and I also feel like learning about each other. Water mouths. And helping people and, and facilitating uh, communities because that, that's the only way. I mean, fighting everything, fighting over a resource that's going to run out, you, you know, fighting and, and like it's pushing. So wars. Yeah, religion has killed more people than anything. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe like superheroes, it needs to be revamped. Yeah, in my opinion, us humans, I feel like we're the definition of insanity. It's, uh, we need to be better to each other. Anyways, is there a thing? Yeah, we should wrap this up. Is there anything you'd like to add? Yes, absolutely. What's that? May I please send it? All right. Did you have a expectation of how this interview was going to go? No. For that, end it. Thank you so much. Have a good night. With that bit of Masterpiece Theater, we will wrap up the season and look forward to season three. I'm a
high water. This concludes the recording. Destroy it. Okay.